you you want to um hey zion so yep. not there okay regarding a trough uh carved in a rock we cannot draw water from a contest from it uh nor consecrate make contest in it nor sprinkle make contest from it and it doesn't require a sealed cover and it does not disqualify a mikvah if it was a vessel and one attached it to the ground with plaster, one may draw water from Mekatos from it and consecrate Mekatos in it and sprinkle Mekatos from it. And it requires a seal cover and it disqualifies a mikvah. If the bottom of the trough was perforated and he plugged the perforation with a rag, the water inside the trough is invalid because it is not encircled by a vessel. If one perforated a vessel on its side and plugged the perforation with a rag, the water inside is valid since it is circled by a vessel. If one made a room of clay for the trough and water went there, it is invalid. If the rim is strong enough that it can be carried with the trough, the border is valid. Regarding two troughs in one boulder, if one consecrated Mekatos in it and one and Mekatos in one of the troughs, the border in the second trough is not consecrated. If the troughs were perforated from one to the other with a hole the size of a skin bottle or two or a bottle's tube, or if water was flowing over them, even over a flow of thin as a garlic peel, and one consecrated Mekatos in it, one of them, the border in the second trough is consecrated. Regarding two rocks at one position near each other and made a trough, and similarly regarding two kneading bowls, and similarly regarding a trough that split in the two, the water between them is not consecrated. And we consecrated them with lime or gypsum and they uh two so they can be carried as one, the water between them is consecrated. Okay, so okay. the theme, the theme of all of these Mishnayas over here is Kli can be used for uh if, if it's if it's defined as a clee then it can be used for mechatas if it's not defined as a clee it cannot be used even if it'll physically mm -hmm. hold water if it doesn't have the shame clee on it it's not uh then it cannot be used okay that's your that's your summary of those last three which nice okay um Hamakadesh. Okay, so now we're, we're moving into the into the stage of actually the sprinkling of ashes into the water in order to make Make this turn this from Mayim Chaim into Mechatas. Okay, Hamakadesh v'Nafal Hakidush al Yado. So he was he was doing the uh, he was doing the kiddush. He picked he picked up some ashes in his hands, and um, or, and the and the and the ashes just fell without any of his strength. Let's say a, a, a little gust of wind blew the ashes into the water, or on that side, um, or it fell onto the side of the of the trough. Or of the of the key or achakar nafal alashakis and then afterwards so he sprinkled it and it fell on the side of the trough and then afterwards it fell into the shakis that this is puzzle it's not it requires koach gavra it must be human he must be human effort that puts the ashes into the water okay nafal minash for ferris the shakis puzzle if it fell directly from the um from the container of the ashes into the into the trough it does it doesn't work unless it was unless it was a human who that tilted it okay nafa and not tell me for ferris for kisan um or she give us a um so uh if he if he took from the if he took ashes out of the container right of where the ashes were and mm -hmm. then he put the lid back on that container or he he decided he, he said oh hold on let me just close the door Okay, there's there's no problem with the ashes. The ashes are unaffected, but because he got involved in another malacha, with while he's holding onto the Mayim chayim, that's that's going to pass later. Right? Hamayim pasulim. Okay, the, the the ashes are fine, but the water just lost its potency because because he got involved in another malacha in between drawing the water and actually sanctifying it. So it's, so your 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 advice always when you uh, when you're drawing water for Mayim for for uh, mechatas, draw it. And sanctify it straight away because there's so many there's so many things you can get involved in if you do, if you do anything in between and we're going to see a few more examples of that anything in between that you get involved in is going to mess up your water. Kafa mm -hmm. um what happens if he if he took the if he took the um the jug and uh, he was he, the, the, he was he was holding a little container of the of the ashes and he and he put it back down on the ground. Right. So the, the water is still not. The water is still uh, going to become puzzled because he got involved in something that wasn't involved directly in the in the kiddush. Okay, Elamai, what's he supposed to do? The if he if he straightened it out in his own hand, right? So he 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 tilted the jug and you know to to pour some ashes into his one hand, and now he, so he doesn't he doesn't want the rest of the ashes to spill. So what's he what's he supposed to do? He turns his he turns it up and he's holding it in his other hand, 
and and then he can and then he can sprinkle it. So he took it, so he took his left hand and he poured. Uh, he's holding the key in his in his in his left hand. He pours it into his right hand and then he straightens it up so that it doesn't spill anymore. And then, okay, that's fine because mipnei there's no other way of doing it, right? The only other way, the only thing you can do is to straighten it up and hold it in your hand. Now, getting involved in putting it down, covering it up, whatever, that's now in, uh, some sort of intervening malacha. But the very least he can do is just straighten it up in his hand, and that is acceptable. Okay. Mishnah base. Haya kiddush tsaf al Okay, so he sprinkled some uh, some ashes into the water and he put a lot in. That's an interesting question, just by the way. I didn't actually ever see any required minimum quantity of ashes that you're supposed to put into the water in order to sanctify it. Like, is like one grain of ash enough? There's no uh, shear. I, there's no shear. So I, I'm, I've never seen a shear at, le at least. Um, but if there is, I'll, I'll be interested to, to see. Um, maybe I'll, I'll ask one of my uh, chat GBT uh, chatbots to say, is there a minimum shear of ashes that... And see I never thought of that, but when they do the mekatos, there should be some kind of everything has a shear. So yeah. I can't imagine that they just you have one drop of a shear. Uh, yeah. Know. Okay. So so anyway, he he put a, a whole chunk of, of ashes in, and some of it's floating on top of the water. He said, "Ah, oh, that was too much." So Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Shimon, Amir, not tell on the kadesh. Let him take a, a bit more, uh, just scoop it back from the top, and he can reuse it on a, on another on some other water. Anything that's touched the water, you may not do again. Its mitzvah has been its mitzvah has been fulfilled. You cannot use it on a second batch of water. Zalaf kiddush milamatan. Okay, he has an opposite an opposite idea where he, um, he finishes up the the mechatas and finds some ashes uh, at the bottom. And they've been sitting in the sun and they've baked dry. And now you want to take them and put them into uh, another one. Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Shimon, same guys again. As they say, make sure they're dry and you can use them again. They're still the same ashes. It's, it's, the, 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 the mitzvah has been done. They cannot be used a second time. And that is the halacha. Okay. Mishnah Gimel. Mekadesh B'Shokes. So he there's a trough of, of Mayim Chaim, and there's a little jug sitting in the bottom of the trough so that's also filled with water. Okay. Um, and he sprinkles ashes onto this water and makes it and makes it uh, proper mechatas. And he says, Oh, look, there's a little jug in the bottom. Now, is the water inside that jug sanctified? So if he reaches, uh, so if uh, he, he manages to like, I don't know, stick a hook in and, and pull out the uh, uh, pull out the jug and get the water out. Okay. Afalpi shepiv tsar kol shehu. Even though it's got a very narrow neck, hamayim shebasoch amakudashin. It's excellent. It's it's still there's it's still it's a kli. It's inside and the water was all in contact. So all the water that's that's in contact with other water, all of it becomes mechatas. Okay. You you got no problem over here. Okay. So so now im hay im hayas fog. Now what happens if that's not a, a little jug inside there, but it's a sponge, and, and the sponge also contains water. So, uh, did you say the water inside the sponge is, is okay? Well, the problem is that a sponge is not a kli. Okay, so any water that's inside the sponge is automatically pussel. So the water inside the sponge is no good. So what are you supposed to do? You look inside, oh my gosh, I've got this mechatas, but there's a sponge in the bottom of the kli, which I didn't notice before. Slap the forehead. What do we do now? Okay, so let him carefully pour it off into another kli until the water level reaches the level of the sponge. Stop there. Right. Because as soon as the water level goes below the sponge, then the sponge is going to start draining water out. And as soon as a single drop of water comes out of the sponge, that's, the, that's it for the rest of the water. If he touched the sponge, uh, even though the water around it is, is still covering it, because any any contact on the sponge, we choshesh that he squeezed out a drop of water from the sponge into the mechatas, and that's all puzzle. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you want to go to Gimel Aleph now? Or? Yes. Yes, I would okay. like to go to Gimel Aleph now.
Um, seven days before the burning of the pyre, they would request, sequester the Kohanim who was to burn the pyre from his house to the um, chamber in front of the beer. The northeast corner of the temple, that was called the stone house, and they would sprinkle mekatas on him all seven days from all the katas ashes that were there. Rabbi Yossi said they would sprinkle mekatas on him only on the third and seventh days, and Rabbi Penina Zagan said they would sprinkle mekatas on the Kohen who burned the pyre on all seven days, but they would sprinkle mekatas on the Kohen God who performed the service of Yom Kippur only on the third and seventh days. There were courtyards in Jerusalem built on bedrock, and beneath them was a hollow because of concern for a grave of the deep. And they would bring pregnant women, and they would give birth there and rear the children there. And they would bring oxen with doors on their backs, and the children would sit on top of them with cups of stone in their hands. When they would reach the spring of Shiloh, the children would descend and fill the cups with, the, with what then ascend on top. I'm sorry. They would then ascend and sit on top of the doors. Uh, Rabbi Yoshi says, from this place, the child would lower the cup and fill it. Okay. And we go on to... Where is it? Gaim, hey, hey. Okay. Uh, I'm going to finish with power now. Okay. Gaim. Zion, hey, hey. Okay. Once the afflicted person has been confirmed, tell me, doubt of, is a, a doubt is rude, tell me. How, how, how so? Two people came to a Kohen, one with a Baharis the size of a grist, and the other with a Baharis the size of a cellar. If at the end of the week both Baharis are larger than a cellar, they'd be growth. They both become firm tummy. Even if they both, I mean, even if both the guy and recover to the size of a cellar, they both remain tummy until they have both become as small as a gris. This is what was said. Once the afflicted person has been confirmed tummy, a doubt is ruled tummy. The basic Baharis is the size of a cellar and gris squared. The area of a gris is equivalent to nine lentils, and the area of a lentil is equivalent to the area on which four hairs grows. Thus, there were 36 hairs in the nega. A Baharis the size of a gris that contained the mikya. The size of a lentil, if the Bahara spread, it's tummy, and if it receded, it becomes tahor. If the Mickey were expanded, the Bahara is uh, a tahor, and if the Mickey receded, the Bahara is tahor. Okay. Halem. Okay. Halem, okay. good test, Gimel. The part of the Mizran that extends from the bed is susceptible to tumor, whatever its length, and maybe, maybe these are the words of Rameya. Rabbi Yossi says only until 10 handbreadths. The minimum length of the membranes of a Mizra is seven handbreadths, which is sufficient to make it flat for a donkey. If, if, if a, um, if a, a Zav is supposed to support it by a bed and the Mizra, it transmits tumor to twin, uh, to two and validates one. These are the words of Ramea. Rabbi Yossi says if a Zav is supported by the bed and by the Mizra, the first 10 hand, handbreadths of the Mizra transmit tumor to two and validate one. The part of the Mizra from 10 handbreadths and out, which transmits tumor from one, to one and invalidates one. If a zav is supported by the Mizran from ten handbreadths or inward, it is tummy from hand ten handbreadths and outward it is tahor. If a bed was tummy midras and one round the Mizran around it, the entire bed is tummy midras. The Mizran is removed, the bed itself is tummy midras, and the Mizran and tummy and the Mizran is tummy due to contract with the Mizras have a Azav. If the bed was tummy with seven day tumor and one round the Mizran around it, the entire bed is tummy with seven day tumor. If Mizran is removed, the bed itself is tummy with seven day tumor, and the Mizran is tummy with even tumor. If the bed was tummy with evening tumor, and one round the Mizran around it, the entire bed is tummy with evening tumor. And if the Mizran is removed, the bed itself is tummy with evening tumor, and the Mizran is tahu. If the yeah. bed. That's it. So, I think that's that's it. It. Right. Yeah, finish Mishnah. Hey. It, was, it actually just it occurred to me yesterday that, you know, when when we rebuild the base of Mikdash from Herb Yomainu, and we happen to, and we've got the paraduma, and we bring in korbanos again. It's actually going to be a, a practical issue. Beds are going to be our biggest practical issue in Tuma and Tara, right. because, because a bed, a bed is a midras, okay, right. which means that if it's tame midras, then anyone who sits on it is immediately going to become tame, okay. Uh, anyone who sleeps on it obviously is going to become tame. And and how does a bed become a midrash? Well, all it needs is for a woman who's in nida to sit on it. Right, right. Like, as soon as, like, I mean, is there a single bed anywhere in the country that has not had a woman who's at one time been in nida sitting on the sitting on the bed? Okay, so so now, okay, so this so this you know it's 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 a it's a mild tumor that you get from sitting on it. Okay, mm -hmm. but nonetheless. You're still going to have to oh, you're still going to go to mikvah to to get rid of it, 
Okay, even assuming uh, like uh, after Paradoma stuff. So you're going to have to go into, so you want, let's say you want to go to Yerushalayim, you're going to have to find somewhere to sleep. So maybe you're going to sleep on the floor. I don't know. Every, everyone, like, everyone's going to have to sleep on the floor or, or find or find like beds that have been protected from tumor for high <laughs> by people who are going to like, you're going to have, you're going to have to, that's going to be a market, by the way, is like hotel of like, of tumor beds. <laughs> Um, that you're going to be able to sleep on um so that, look it's only going to be an issue for for, for Israelim if we're going to go to the mikdash and we want to go in and then bring a korban okay so you'll pay a bit, a bit extra for a hotel bed so you can sleep over and the next day then you're your tower and you can walk into the uh, and you can walk into the the, the, the mikdash but for koanim living all around the country and want to eat trimmer then you know oh, they, they look i mean like they, they, they'll only be able to eat trimmer by night <laughs> because because they're gonna go to, they're gonna go to, uh, you know, they'll they'll sleep, they'll become tame, they'll go to mikveh, and then they'll wait until the evening, and then they can eat their truma. It's just, it's. Just, I'm just thinking of all these practicalities because beds are the, like gonna be the biggest issue when. Well, have you thought about opening a business? <laughs> yeah, seriously, because uh, like everything else, it was so easy to take to mikveh. And the reason I was thinking about it was because we were looking at the in the mishnayos yesterday. Um, it was like you know, how to ta- disem- disassembling a bed so you can put it in the mikveh and whatever. And I think, oh my gosh, like that's actually a, a really big deal is to is to take not, beds, not even, take not even a bed over. though. It's anything anything the needle sits on is a problem. Any what? Anything the needle will sit on will be a problem. Right, so chairs as well, absolutely. Yeah. But, but you know, chairs, cha- chairs are you know, I'm not, I'm not diminishing it, but chairs are a little easier to transport. All right. You, know, you want, you want to keep a, a like a special non needed chair, a special, a special tower chair. Okay, great, take it. You know, stick it in the mikveh. You'll find a way of getting it into the mikveh. Oh, I can see people taking a bus to Yerushalayim, and there's a big problem with that. You know, people sitting, women sitting on the bus. You know, and and they maybe oh, need a bus. The thing is that the is the does the whole did the whole bus become wow okay no so okay so the bus itself because it's something amid the the bermuda the, the bus itself will not become tummy because it's too big um but the but the chairs yeah right you know, uh, right you know, okay, you have to have a from bus company that says okay needles please do not sit over here and then you're gonna have like all these uh you know people shiv you or whatever saying now nah, you you discriminate against women sitting here and, okay. the mixed buses there'll be separate buses there'll be needed buses there'll be <laughs> yeah okay oh, okay um Bob Gimel. Bob Gimel. all who ascend the altar ascend toward the right I go around the altar to ascend to the left except for one who ascends for these three things we would ascend and retrace their steps. How is the service of the very katas performed? He would perform minlika on its head opposite the back of the skull without separating, and he would sprinkle the blood upon the wall of the altar. The remainder of the blood would drain upon the base, and the altar receives only its blood while all of, all of it goes to the kohan. How does the bird Ola offered? Uh, he ascended the ramp, turned to the surrounding edge, and arrived at the southeast corner. He would perform minlika on its head opposite the back of the skull and separate and drain its blood upon the altar of the wall, wall to wall. He would then take the head and bring its incision up against the altar, saturate it with salt, throw it upon the fires, and he would then come to the body and remove the crop. And the feathers and trails were attached to it, and throw and, and which were attached to it, and throw them to the place of the ashes. He would rend but not separate it, however, if he separated it to valid, and he would then saturate it with salt and throw it upon the fires. Okay. Okay. And to close, Asubas. Okay. Um, hey, hey. If old slaves or old slave women fell to heart, they should be old. Uh, they should be sold. Land should be bought with the proceeds, and he enjoys the uplift uh, therefore. Now, Shimon ben Gamil says he need not sell them because they are the pride of a father's house. If old olive trees or old grapevines fell to her, they should be sold as wood. Land should be bought with the proceeds, and he enjoys the uplift therefore thereof. Now, Yehuda says. She did not sell them because they are the pride of a father's house. And once, if one spent money on his wife's property, whether he spent much or ate little, uh, or spent little and ate much, when he spent, he spent, and what he ate, he ate. If he spent and did not eat, he must swear how much he spent and take compensation. A woman waiting a yavin to whom property fell, by Shammai and Beis Hillel agree that if, the, if she sells it or gives it away, the act is valid. If she died, what is to be done with the ketubah and what the property that comes in and goes out with her? 
Beis Shammai says the husband's heirs are um, divided with the father's heirs, but Beis Hillel said the property remains in their possession, the ketubah is in the possession of the husband's heirs, the husband, uh, husband's heirs. Land should be bought, and he enjoys the usher thereof. The sages, however, permit produce attached to the ground is his, attached to the ground, but whoever comes first gains possession of them. If he comes first, he gains possession. If he comes, she comes first, land brought, should, land should be brought with it, and he enjoys the upward thereof. If he married her, rather, all of his property is surety for her ketubah. Uh, if he divorced her, she is entitled only to a ketubah, and if he remarried her, she's like all the women, she is entitled only to a ketubah. Um, mm. If one writes to, right? If one writes to his wife, I have neither no, uh, neither right, right no That's yeah. it? Hold on, I lost my place over there. Um, you, you just finished Mishnah Zion. I finished, um, no, I finished Ket. Oh, okay, so I think, did you skip a page? No, no, you wouldn't have, because you're in the art scroll now, so that's unlikely. Okay, okay I'll just let you go a little too far. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, tomorrow we, we, we should redo Ket, I think, because we started on Hay. Okay, Ket, okay, Ket. That's that. Okay. Well, uh, I did, wait a second. No, I did. I did not read. I did not read. Uh, chet, chet. No, that's right. Read... We don't. We don't. Okay. Leave it. Leave it at. Uh, leave your book on chet, chet. All right. So we'll start it tomorrow. Okay. And okay. Shumos. Um. Okay. Hey. Um. Coronals of truma, so long as he keeps them, are forbidden. But if he threw them away, they are permitted. So too bones of holy food, so long as he keeps them, they are forbidden. But if he threw them away, they are permitted. Coarse brand is permitted. Fine brand of new is forbidden, but of old is permitted. And it may treat truma as if he treats chulin. If one sifts one or two cobs of fine flour from a saw, he may not throw away the rest of it and must put it in the hidden place. If one cleared out truma from wheat from a storeroom, he is not enjoined to sit down and collect them one by one, but if he sweeps in his usual manner, he may put coolant into it. So too, if a jar of oil was upset, he is not enjoined to sit down and scoop it up, but deals with it as he would with coolant. Okay. I'm a little bit upset because we have a 